Hey folks, how's it going? It has been way too long since I've done one of these. Uh, so we're going to pick this back up and see what we got out. Um, I did a console kind of rig rundown um, back in 2019. And uh, we're obviously on something very different. This is a different tour. I'm out right now with Scotty McCrary on his same truck tour. We're in Salina, Kansas today. And I just wanted to show you around. Show you around what's new and what I've been working on lately and some new toys that we're playing with. So I'm lucky enough to uh, have our tour package provided by Spectrum Sound in Nashville, Tennessee, and they put this package together for us. It's been working great. I'm super happy with it. Um, early last year, we decided to change up the console that we were using. We were coming from the Avid SXL and we decided to move over to Yamaha. Um, I am new to Yamaha. I've never toured with one. I've really only done like one, maybe two shows on it. But um, I was very interested in the new offerings in the Ravage series. They have a lot of new plug-in processing power. There's new stage boxes, new mic pre's. Um, the whole Yamaha ecosystem, like desk, was redone for Ravage, and it was very interesting. Um, some other reasons we went over is that we we switched was uh yamaha has a reputation for being extremely reliable and that was appetizing to us that that was a uh, something we were really looking forward to not worrying about anymore uh so we were we're really excited and so far knock on wood <laughs> it's been incredibly reliable so that's been great um but the main thing is that they this desk sounds awesome. I've been really happy with it. And after a couple little things, just getting used to workflow things, setup things, uh, that really were a non-issue, I can now fly on it. Sounds great, feels great. I have fun mixing on it. People seem to respond to it. And um, it's just a really fun desk. So let me show you around a couple things. So first we have the Surface. This is the PM10 Compact. So it is effectively their flagship console, the PM10, but with just one bank of 12 faders and one screen just lobbed off the side of it. Um, this show is not super high input. I think we only have like 56 inputs, including all of our talkbacks, all of our kind of um, miscellaneous utility channels. So even fewer than that are actually coming to the PA. So we don't have a massive channel count and banking through is just so easy that I didn't need the extra real estate for a, a massive console. The PM10, the full size is really big. In fact, while we were waiting for the compact, we had the full size out for a few weeks and it is just an aircraft carrier. It's massive and it's heavy. And uh, you'll see in a minute that I don't have it on easy tilt. It's just on top of a big old rack case. So I have to have stagehands pull it up and it's, it's a bear. So originally when we decided to go with Ravage, we were thinking that we were gonna do the PM5, which has three banks of faders. And rather than this whole section here, it's another screen. So it's three screens, a lot of screen navigation, to, uh, to, uh, touch to, you know, to change things. Um, how the supply worked of what consoles were available, uh, they ended up sending up sending us out with a PM10, which had all these physical knobs. And, um, you know, I was, I'm used to a touchscreen workflow and I thought this is, frankly, I thought this was wasted on me, but uh, I ended up really liking this. So in this section, there is one knob per function each EQ knob, you don't have to page through anything. All of your EQs are there. You have your separate gate and compression section. Um, you have your silk knob, which I'll get to, uh, you know, gain, high pass, low pass. Every function in your channel in your channel page has its own dedicated knob and button. One thing I really like is uh, having the sends always up. So I keep these on the sends to my to my uh, reverbs. So if I just think, oh, this snare drum is has just a little bit too much reverb, it's always there. 
and I can just get to it super, super quickly with whatever I want to. So if I go to you know, our lead vocalist, I can change his, his reverb right there, super easy. Something else that I was able to tie in and utilize is uh, just how this console handles Dante is my smart system is completely uh, effectively cordless. Um, it's just via the Dante card, the same Dante card that we use to record. And it's, um, so there's just one in, one out, and it's just ethernet. I send my console uh, a mono matrix of what I'm sending to the PA. Uh, I have my measurement mic going into a pre in the back of the console. And what nice thing about that is that it's digitally controlled so it doesn't get moved or knocked. So if I calibrate my smart microphone once for SPL, it's always there and it always stays there. So I like having smart just completely Dante. I don't have to clutter around another interface. That's kind of a new thing that I've been really happy with. Uh, the other thing that we're doing with Dante is if I just have, you know, walk-in music or whatever, that all just comes down Dante. Again, I don't need an interface. It just patches into another Dante channel, and it's really easy. I was really happy to ditch an extra interface, simplify. All I need is just another cat line right into our switch. So that was cool. So you notice on my screen here, I have Smart and I have, uh, you know, Playback and Spotify and iTunes, things like that. Uh, I do have a KVM switch down by my keyboard, which switches to another Mac Mini I have mounted down here. And here I am running uh, the new Nuendo Live software. Uh, it's kind of a new thing. It's actually in, in the last version of the Nuage software that there, uh, Rivage software, excuse me, uh, Rivage software that there is uh, some control that you can utilize from the console to control things like transport. So I can hit play from the console. I can hit record. Um, I can skip around, and every time I change a snapshot, it'll drop a marker, and I can, I can bang back and forth between different markers as I go back and forth. So that's been really slick. That's been really nice. Um, we had been doing recording into Waves Live, and that was working just fine, but some extra transport control just made my life a little just that much easier. And uh, being able to do it from the desk, one more layer of easy. So that's been really cool. So on that computer, all it's doing is record and playback for you know, playback for virtual and record during the show. And then the other computer, all it's doing is just walk in and out music and smart. So on a component level, like I said, I have the PM10 compact for the Surface. And it does utilize a separate engine. This is just the, uh, the PM10 engine, the standard one, the first, first revision. Um, I also have a, a Lake LM44. We'll get to that in just a moment. Over on this side, Spectrum has graciously lent me a, uh, a, la a tablet to run, uh, to con wirelessly control their Lake LM44. So I can take this off the charger, walk anywhere around the venue, see how the cheap seats feel, see how the front feels feel, anywhere else in the room, and I can do EQs and uh, time alignments and level adjustments however I need. That's been really, really helpful. And, um, I am running that lake as a, a AES insert on my matrices. So if I go to my matrices, that lake is just inserted as an AES. So it stays digital, doesn't have to get converted back and forth. So pretty slick. We made it really easy. Going to the back patching every morning is really just maybe five or six cables every morning. So it's, we've made it pretty efficient. Another kind of thing that we have uh, going on here at front of house is I do have a battery backup UPC down here. Uh, so everything has redundant power supplies. The, the surface has redundant power supplies as does the, uh, the engine. So if I were to lose line power, I'd have a good couple minutes and figure out who kicked out the plug and I should be okay. Um, I decided to maximize that and, you know, if the power to go down, I'd lose the computers, I'd lose, you know, smart, I'd lose recording, but I'd much rather lose recording than lose the console. To, so every last little bit of power 
goes to the console and keeps the show running as long as we can. And then hopefully we can, you know, fix it. Shout out, if anything were to go wrong, this guy's got my back. A couple notes here on the back. You can't really see a whole lot because we're in a little, little kind of cramped back here in this theater. But we are running um, HMA fiber which is not the typical fiber choice that you use for these consoles. Reason being is a certain other console manufacturer is considered kind of the uh, festival day norm. And we decided that fiber would be the most likely to be out and already run at a festival day. So if we had a festival where we were say playing in the afternoon, if we were to run our snake, we're stuck there until very, very late at night when we have to get our snake back. But if an HMA fiber snake is already run, all I have to say is, can we just use your fiber snake? We won't even bother with running ours, and away we go. So we took a gamble and decided that that's, that's the easiest way. That's, it's not a gamble. Spectrum hooked us up and they said, okay, we'll just convert this kind of HMA to the other kind of HM, to the other kind of fiber that you need for your for Yamaha. And it's, it's just easy. So now we have the most popular kind of, of fiber cables. And if we were to do a festival, we would not even touch our snake caddy. It would stay on the truck. Nice and easy. So let's talk a little bit about how I've set up my console. Uh, as we can see, I only have two banks of faders, so it was really important to have the most efficient layout possible. There, of course, Yamaha has uh, some great custom fader bank layouts that I am taking full advantage of. And uh, let me walk you through a couple of them that I'm using here. Let's see, I turned down some of the brightness of these displays, so hopefully we can read them a little bit better on video. So. Uh, right here is what I call my show layer. So that's probably 90% of the show. I ha I just stick to this layer. It's kind of my, my money channel, kind of the things that go in and out that I really want to get to really quickly. And then I've got drums. And then uh, that's really the only thing that I can't see from my show from my uh, show layer is my drums. After that, it's just kind of breaking things down. So here are all my strings. So I've got my, my bass. Uh, electrics, acoustics, steels, uh, some other kind of miscellaneous uh, banjo. Uh, all of my vocals, whether they're the main, kind of our walk-in, or any of our background vocals. All of our tracks, including the uh, DCA and the, and the group. And then this layer I use when we have kind of the acoustic breakdown section in the middle of the show where people go to some alternate things like there, there's an accordion, there's a mandolin that walks on stage. So just to, for the acoustic part of the show, I just go there. One super nice thing about uh, the Yamaha console. So if I, you know, get myself buried in some kind of weird screens that I don't normally go to, something like this. If I hit this home button, I can program this to go anywhere I want. So I have programmed this to go immediately to my main star vocal page. This automatically brings me to the show layer and the star vocal. So I can always, no matter where I am, have one button push away from getting to my main vocal. Same kind of thing over here. I, I really leave this on my DCAs. Uh, that really doesn't change, but if I were to have gotten myself buried somewhere, I can just hit home and this brings me to my DCA page. So uh, that's, that's pretty slick. That's a really, really nice feature just to always have, always know where, to get, where you need to get to to make the show happen. There's also a ton of user, you know, you can set a, a bunch of keys. So these I just have as standard mute groups, nothing crazy there. Uh, if you can read that guy, that is very handy. I'm very happy to have this as an alternate input. So we have a main and spare uh, microphone. And uh, just like on a couple other console manufacturers, you can just have another channel directly feed, or excuse me, another input on your stage box feed the same channel. So no need to duplicate channels, no need to duplicate and copy and paste EQs and remember to update them. It just goes from your A input to your B input. So that's a nice little comforting thing to know that if anything goes wrong, I'm one button push away from immediately being to the spare mic. 
Some other custom buttons that I have are just some pages that I normally want to get to. Uh, we'll dig in a little bit to, to uh, some plugins here, but I always want to get to uh, our lead vocalist, the dynamic EQ and his uh, static EQ. I just want to get to that really, really quickly. Um, the page with all of our effects. Uh, and then there's one where I can get to our set list, which has the order of our snapshots if I ever need to change that. And other, just a couple uh, useful things. Here's uh, the list of our of our uh, recording that I have, if I need to, get, to do some uh, recording with the USB. So just very, very usable um, uh, buttons to, to get around and navigate to things you might need to get to. Another thing that really drew me into the Ravage workflow and something I was really excited to do is I don't need any outboard processing. There's so much processing available and cool, vibey inserts and plugins to work with on the desk without needing to leave the desk at all. And I was really, really pumped about that. So let's look at a couple of them. Things like the primary source enhancer here. I'm gonna get rid of that glare a little bit. This guy is some uh, Voodoo Magic. It's amazing. So much gain before feedback on our vocalist that, uh, I mean, we do a dummy check every day and I literally have uh, my monitor guy go on stage and point the microphone at the PA and I have not heard it feedback like in months. It's I can't remember the last time we've I've heard feedback from a vocal mic. Um, a little trick, I am also using this on my snare top. I'm basically using it as a smart gate to get rid of some hi-hat. For those of you who don't know, the 5045 primary source enhancer is based on a hardware unit that Rupert Neve Designs makes of the same name, 5045. It's basically a gate, but it's a lot more, or it's... It's, it's, it's an expander is a better term for it, but there's some really awesome voodoo magic in there. Um, there is a transformer and these plugins are modeled. The transformers are modeled and the modeling is really good. So um, yeah, it's a pretty fantastic tool. Along with that, there are uh, lots of the Portico series modeling. Um, this compressor is just a really sweet neutral compressor. Same thing with the CQ. I have this kind of all over the place. It's a really sweet sounding, gentle, um, uh, just just all around just great EQ. I have this kind of all over the place. Let's see, what are some other e fun plugins that I'm using? Um, oh yeah, got to. Neve 1073, or the Rupert EQ 773, which is their, it's a model of a 1073. Uh, we've got a really great model of an 1176, and uh, I, I have used a lot of different software versions. This one is very good, very good indeed. Some other fun ones is, uh, this one's pretty new, the uh, Master Bus Processor. Um, one thing I really love is this width control. Um, you don't have to be super aggro with it but man it's really cool i put this on my master bus and on like the guitar bus and it just kind of widens and does some kind of really really cool voodoo magic for it okay so let's talk briefly about silk so the way the silk works is it is effectively a chip on the stage box um it is not uh, a plugin that you can operate from the desk. It is a function of the preamp, which means a few things. One, if you were to share a stage box, you would also be sharing silk settings. So I am extra lucky. We have an analog split and I have my own gains, my own stage box, and my own silk channel control. So that's pretty cool. Also, it means that if you're recording, which we are, your silk settings are recorded because that the recording pulls it right off of the preamp and the silk setting is part of that preamp. So, that being said, there are two circuits. There's a red and a blue circuit and they do sound different. It is by listening to one channel, a pretty nuanced, subtle thing. 
but over the course of the entire desk, it's it's really really great. It's I mean it's console emulation, it's preamp emulation, so it's an additive thing. I know um, when we were uh, demoing this, there's actually uh, our guy over at Yamaha uh, had a demo session where he actually had a. a uh, a couple channels coming in for you know live band recording and he was bringing them into the stage box and he had a preset where there was no silk there was silk on the red setting and silk on the blue setting and listening to any individual channel you couldn't really hear much of a difference but over the course of the if you have all of your channels changing it really did make a difference and it made a really pleasing difference it sounded warmer it sounded more exciting um there's a bunch of different average adjectives but i'm just gonna stick with better one more quick shout out to uh spectrum sound in nashville i'm over here in monitor world look at this cable management guys unbelievable so here is what i was talking about this is the uh analog split so all of our channels come in here and it goes to either the front of house rpio which is the Ravage. Uh, inputs and outputs rack with the silk channels or the monitor one. So we each have our own, our own gains, our own silk channels, uh, not sharing nothing. And then of course our PSM 1000s, we got a couple channels of Axiant, our playback, everything we need. Hi Adam's World. And on the back side, we're pretty well self-contained. All we need is power and PA. So that's the fiber running out the front of house. I've got a 12 channel analog snake also running out there. Uh, excuse me, 16 channel, 16 channel. Um, three phase power going in. This is only for audio power and really all it's running is uh, some backline, like some Kempers and things in our audio console package. And all of our, all of our inputs from all across stage are either internal to this double wide rack or come down one of these three hoses. We have the drums loom, the uh, bass and keyboard loom, and guitars loom. So pretty slick, pretty easy, pretty quick. That's the goal. Okay, this is by no means a full top to bottom system run through, but just kind of an update where we're at and what I've been up to. Uh, like I said, new desk, new tour. Um, I'm really liking the results out here. If you see coming through, uh, come check out the show. Thanks for checking out this rig rundown. Uh, sorry it's been so long since the last one, but uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have questions about it, just hit me up. I try to respond to comments as soon as I see them, when, which I've seen a lot in the last one, which is great. Uh, the blog is coming along. Please check up on that. Keep, uh, keep updated on that, if it sounds good.com. Uh, there might even be some merch in the works. Cool. More roadie stuff. Thanks for checking this video out. Hope this was helpful. Hope you might have learned something or just sparked some interest. See you next time.